Hi friends, I hope you are doing well. Um, lately I've been struggling a lot with social anxiety to the point where it's been really hindering my everyday life, but it also made me reflect on my depression and the fact that I'm still sad sometimes, but I'm not depressed anymore. And the tips and the changes I've made in my life that allowed me to completely heal from my depression and I really wanted to share them with you. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my backstory first. If you want to just skip to the tips, I'll leave timestamps so you can just skip to the part you want to hear about. I started being depressed very, very early, probably at the age of five around my parents' divorce. And I was diagnosed with clinical depression in my teenage years and I got medication for anxiety, insomnia, and depression. Despite seeing many therapists and being on several kinds of medication and trying other kinds of medication, nothing really helped and I just felt worse and worse. Obviously medication didn't help and I'll also touch on that a little bit later because I don't think medication is the right answer anymore. I moved to France when I was 18 and I finally started living on my own terms and I know there are so many ways now that you can heal depression so I'll tell you all my favorite tips. The first key thing that I think is really important in your journey to healing is completely understanding that depression isn't your fault. I really want to tell you this because I think it's very common, at least in my experience, that family and friends sort of blame you for your depression. I think most people don't mean any harm, but anytime someone expresses frustration that you're depressed or even the fact that they're being tired of you being depressed, which is a very negative circle that I think can happen in families or when you live with someone who's depressed, it can really hurt the person who's depressed negatively. But they obviously shouldn't express this and it's really Really important that you don't take it to heart because depression is not your fault and that is really important to understand for you to heal and also for you to feel better and be empowered over your own health one day the second thing that I think there's a lot of confusion about and a lot of stigma talking about but that is that medication does not heal depression Many people have asked me for advice on medication and I used to say that I didn't know if medication helped me or not, so honestly I couldn't say anything about it. But now, truly being on the other side of depression, I can honestly say that medication should not be encouraged. Some of the side effects of antidepressant medication is depression, <laughs> suicide, self-harm, anxiety. There are so many reasons to not be on medication. And I think an even bigger issue than the medication itself is that the premise on which the medication is given or prescribed is faulty. Antidepressants are serious drugs with really, really serious side effects, yet they are being given out as it was free candy. This is because antidepressants aren't given to people to heal from their depression. Antidepressants are given to people so they can go back into society and function pretty much as slaves in our current capitalist system. Now, if you think this sounds severe, I think you should truly, truly, before you react, first look at our capitalist lifestyle, the history of the schooling system, and the history of working. When I was prescribed antidepressants, I truly felt like I had no other option. I felt like this was my last lifeline or my last thing to try. But the crazy thing was that I had a thousand different things that I could try, but that no doctors, none of the therapists, not even my parents, no one told me about these options. So of course it was very difficult for me and it took me many years to be able to find these tips or ideas or lifestyle changes myself. My personal experience with medication was a very long journey. I took medication for several, several years. My The final drug I was on was Prozac. I was on the highest dose that was allowed in Sweden. The American dose is higher, crazy enough. And one day I had to go to the doctor to get some blood checked and it, they found out the Prozac was damaging my liver. Now, instead of taking me off this medication or talking about other ways to heal my depression, the doctors just lowered my dose. And I think this is just symptomatic of how medication are being given to people, especially young people who are maybe not necessarily completely in charge of their health. What we want is to heal from depression and to feel truly happy. And there are so many better natural alternatives to antidepressants. And that brings me on to the next point. Number three, and this is one of my favorite points because it's so mind blowing, and that is the magic word sulforaphane. If you believe in science, if you believe in health, or if you believe in healing, you should try sulforaphane. 
You don't even have to be depressed to try it. There is so much science on sulforaphane. I'll leave some links in the description down below and I hope you check them out. Sulforaphane is truly amazing. It's been proven to help with depression. It's also been proving to help with autism. And I am really passionate about sulforaphane because you can grow it at home. It's not a supplement. You just need to eat a little, little bit of it and it's super cheap and easy to make. Furthermore, it's very effective at protecting you against cancer, so this is something everyone should add to their diet, whether you're depressed or not. The easiest and cheapest way to consume sulforaphane is to buy some organic broccoli seeds, sprinkle them in a little tray with some wet paper or a little bit of soil, and then just let them grow for a few days before you consume them. My fourth tip for healing depression is looking at the root cause. In our modern society and in our capitalist society, there is a lack of focus on nuanced conversation that still has simple results. What I mean by this is that there's often a reason for depression, or several reasons. But the problem is that the doctors you see, the therapists you see, and the society around you, they don't really care about these causes, they just want to fix the problem. Now I think it's way more beneficial for you and your future happiness to ask yourself why you are sad. We want to heal completely, right? So just as how you are trying to heal from a disease, not by taking painkillers, but trying to figure out the root cause, we want to do this with our depression and our mental well-being too. How I started this was by slowly starting to look at anything that triggered my depression or anxiety or anything that made me feel worse and I slowly started to see which of these triggers or problems that I could change or fix or change my um, feelings towards. I started by healing my eating disorder. I completely stopped exercising for I think five years and allowed myself to eat absolutely anything I wanted. I stopped self-harming by making a sort of pact with my therapist and also by starting to draw butterflies on my arms. I stopped talking to certain people. I stopped doing certain activities. I stopped reading the news, for example. And another pivotal point was becoming vegetarian and then also vegan, which also really helped my eating disorder lots and lots. And so many other things that slowly but surely made me feel a lot better. And the reason I'm emphasizing this so much is because it's so, so important. To completely heal from your depression, I think that there has to be a certain realization or awakening within you. The truth is that our society is a recipe for depression. We live disconnected from other people, disconnected from ourselves. We are working for huge corporations instead of spending time in nature. Even in developed societies, we no longer have access to clean produce or water and we live in toxic homes. And we really have to understand that all of these things do contribute negatively towards our health. It's a lot more difficult to be happy if you are constantly sick. It's a lot more difficult to be happy if you're constantly working. I do believe this is a very big topic and I will talk about it in a future video too. The fifth point for healing your depression is to realize that you have to heal yourself. It is not your fault that you're depressed, however, it is completely your responsibility to heal yourself. It's not the responsibility of a therapist or a partner or even a pet that is in fact very selfish and we really need to make sure that we heal our depression ourselves so that we then can be with other people and beings in the world. So you have to actively take responsibility to heal yourself. I just want to make a side note that if you're under 18 this can be very very difficult and all I can say is do your best and when you become 18 or when you can move away from your home I think there will be many more possibilities to do this. A key point that shifted my depression and something that most of my friends seem to never ever do is to stop doing things that don't bring you joy. Apparently this is a controversial statement. Anytime I say something like this, anytime my husband says something like this in one of his videos, there's always someone <laughs> who says you can't always be happy or you're gonna have to do things that make you unhappy or you're gonna have to do things that you don't want to do. Now I have two responses to this. One of the responses is that I would like to live, and I believe it's completely possible, in a world where my mental state doesn't mind doing things that might be useful but not be fun. Now the second point is that our lives are extremely short. Everything is impermanent. And to believe that we should do things that doesn't make us happy in this very, very short time we have here for absolutely no valid reason is frankly ridiculous. Some of the things I stopped doing was drinking alcohol, going to parties, eating meat, uh, later on doing drugs, stopped doing these things. 
changing jobs when I didn't like them and trying to find a job that I liked and or a job that at least I could do in the meantime. And all these things really, really helped my well-being. And just important to say here when we're searching for happiness is we shouldn't harm ourselves, but we should also not harm others with our actions. Number seven is change your physical surroundings. Again, I might have the same naysayers here who believe that we can't just change our surroundings to feel better, but I think you can absolutely do that. I'm not saying that that will completely heal your depression, but I am sure it will change things. In our Western society, and I think especially in the US, people are told that they need to work hard and that they pretty much need to be in pain to reach success and that they don't deserve to just live a happy, easy, effortless life. People tend to stay in situations which aren't making them happy, but I think you should change these situations and change your circumstances and physical surroundings. One of my favorite examples about this is the Tibetan monks and their story. Now, the Tibetan monks are some of the most highly realized meditation masters in the world. When Tibet was invaded by China, a lot of these monks were captured and tortured. These monks tell stories about how they tried to meditate during the torture to evoke compassion towards their torture, and a lot of them tell stories of how they found happiness in captivation. However, when the door was opened and they were allowed to be let go, they didn't stay there. Although they had enough mental capacity to be happy even in the worst circumstances, when they were allowed to freely leave, they did so. And I think this is such an important lesson because I think we're being told to stay in relationships where our partner is not making us happy. I think we are being told to talk to people like our parents, even if they're harming us. But I think it's really important to realize that even if you attain complete enlightenment and freedom of suffering in your mental well-being, in your mental state, it's really important to still be aware that if something is not serving you, it's time to let go and it's time to leave that situation. So this is my favorite story and I hope it can benefit you too. Now, after we've changed our physical surroundings, it's time to start working on the mental experience. I think this should be done after the physical surroundings because I think this one is a lot harder. I said before that to truly heal from depression, we need to find some sort of awakening within ourselves to realize that what we do is empty or fake. This is important so that we don't go from one belief to another. Again, this is a big topic. I'll talk about this more on my other channel, a spiritual saga, but there's this difference between the conceptual reality and the absolute reality or the absolute truth. Now, the conceptual reality is where most of us live. That's where everything exists. Money, being pretty, being ugly, good, bad, uh, any kind of concept you can think of. All these things are just concept, but if you would close your eyes or if you would just be in this present moment, these things would no longer be true. For example, I conceptually know that my dad is in Sweden. However, I don't know that to be absolutely true. All I know is my present experience. That's all I can say I know. So I can't know that my dad is in Sweden. I could call him and then he would be in my experience through technology, but I can't be with him. And I sit here in this room in New Zealand and I have no way of knowing that he is alive, that he's in Sweden, that he is thriving. I have, these are all conceptual ideas. So here we have the difference of the conceptual versus the objective or the absolute truth. Again, this is a spiritual journey, but I think it's an important journey to go on to truly heal depression. Number nine is that we need to heal our depression without drama. To heal our depression, in some ways, we need to heal the entire world. Holistic healing shouldn't mean crazy supplements and beliefs. Scientific healing shouldn't mean hardcore drugs or invasive surgery. But in our very crazy, mad world, they do. This is another reason why we need to be able to discern and learn what is real and what is not real. I have a list of very practical tips that I find very helpful, so I'll put that on the screen so you can save that for later. The last tip is that healing depression means changing. Depression means that something currently in your life and in your mind is not good. So in order to heal our depression, we need to change our life. Change is not necessarily comfortable or easy, and not everyone around you will be comfortable either with you changing. But I highly encourage you to go for it and change and improve so you can feel better because we're talking about life and death here. People seem to be so careful and cautious when they talk about depression, but when we try to actually do something about it, they don't seem to be on board because then we're changing. We're changing our ideas. We're letting go of our beliefs and then we become a threat to their conceptual reality. 
But this is about life and death. And I think everyone has to realize that depression is really a question and a matter of life and death. So we need to treat it that seriously. Radical change is absolutely necessary. And I'm fine making uncomfortable changes to survive. Thank you so, so much for watching. This video was way longer than I anticipated, but I really hope you can find it beneficial. I think the depression topic is a lot more nuanced than people tend to make of it. So I really wanted to put all my points in there. And I really do believe that you can heal from your depression. And I really, really hope that you do. I want to say thank you so much for watching and commenting and liking. It really means the world to me. And every time one of you share your stories, it just makes me so motivated that I'm going to cry to keep doing these videos. And it really makes me very, very happy. So thank you so much for watching again. And I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye.